Arturo Morales Acevedo. Y su presentación es Effect of E3HT Concentration in the Precursor Solution on the Crystallinity of Amylid P3HT Thin Films Prepared by Spin Coatin. Pues adelante. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Let's see. Yes. Can you see my presentation, everyone? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Rossi. No. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rosa Nava. Other authors of this research are Gaspar Casados and Arturo Morales Acevedo. Aha, today I'm going to talk to you about the work called Effect of the P3HT concentration in the precursor solution on the crystallinity of anil P3HT thin films repaired by spin coating. Mm, this presentation are divided in goals, introduction, experimental details, results, and discussion. And finally, we will present the conclusions. Uh, our goals were prepared PTHT thin films by spin coating and studied the effect of varying the concentration of PTHT in the solution for spin coating deposition on the optical, morphological, and structural properties of PTHT thin films. As introduction, we know a lot of investigation work about polymer-based photovoltaic devices has been done due to these compounds had good optoelectronic properties. And one of the most studied organic polymers is polytri-exyltiophene 2 5 e best known as p 3 ht It is a p type semiconductor and it exhibits high degree of crystallinity, high hole mobility, extended absorption in the red region, bad gun values from 1.9 to uh, 2.0 electron volts, and also it is environmental is stable. PTHC polymer is a long chain molecular that is made of many monomers like, like this. This is the, the monomer. Uh, this monomer presents a thiophene ring and a alkyl group in these groups of elements help us to identify the PTHT structurally. PTHT presents two chemical conformations, radio regular, where alkyl groups are in order, and radio random, where alkyl groups are in disorder throughout the polymer chain. Being radio regular conformation more stable and it provides higher mobility. Uh, for us, the objective to work this material was to obtain p 3 ht thin films to be applied as a whole transport layer in solar cells, and it could be an alternative material to use in the spirometer. Although this material has been obtained by several deposition methods, only few authors, ha authors have worked with the spin coating method. And we decided to obtain PTHT by the spin coating because this is compatible with perovskite solar cell method. In this research work, three different concentrations were investigated. And from the results, we choose the best PTHT concentration for obtaining high crystallinity thin films. Um, experiments. Experiments. Uh, Experimental process is divided in three steps. First, we prepare precursor solution using a PTHT with radio regular conformation, a chain length mole average with 50,000 to 100,000 units with a purity than greater or equal 90% from Sigma Aldrich run. And solution concentration was, uh, was very using 17, 25, and 50 milligrams of PTHT. And these concentrations were dissolved, uh, everyone, in one milliliter of chlorobenzene. After that, um, uh, they were stirring by one hour at root temperature. As a second step, 
is, mm, second step, a uh, volume of 100 microliters of the precursor solution was deposited by the spin coating on a corning glass whose state rotating at 1,500 revolution per minute for, se uh, for 17 seconds. Finally, the layers uh, were heat treated at 170 Celsius degrees for one hour, and all the process was carried out inside a glove box with a nitrogen environment and a low relative humidity. Samples uh, were identified according to the PTHT concentration as follows. H1 for 17 milligrams uh, per milliliter, per milliliter, H2 for 25 milligrams and H3 for um, 50 milligrams of PTHT per milliliter of chlorobenzene. Uh, PTHT thin films were characterized by a scanning electron microscope to get morphology. A structural character characterizations were done by X-ray diffraction and by Raman spectra. The optical diffuse reflectance was measured using a UVB spectrophotometer, and thickness measurements were performed using a broker perfilometer. Now we present results and discussion. Here we can see the images of the thin films to every PTHT concentration. On the left side, we have the as ground samples. And the, on the right side, the anil samples. At a microscopic level, we could observe a characteristic brown color and a strong adherence to the, the sustated. While micro, micrographs show layers compact, homogeneous, uh, without pinholes, and almost without rudeness surface for all of them. So, we can say that the spin coating process produced very smooth, smooth films and the annealing treatment didn't modify the surface roughness appreciably. Okay, uh, here we can observe in figure two uh, XRD patterns. Uh, we know P3HT crystallized in a chlorombic phase at room temperature. Um, for all the samples, there are two main peaks. Uh, for those theta degrees. One of them at 5.3, which corresponds to the 100 plane of the PTHT of the rubber crystal structure, and the other one at 25 corresponding to the amorphous phase. This part. Uh, notice, notice that for the 17 milligrams H1 sample, uh, there is a small relative increase for this peak when the sample is anil, why in H2 uh, the, um, the, same, the height treated sample shows a high crystallinity improvement in the uh, same pit? Um, it is narrower and with higher intensity compared to the Azraun team field. In addition, here appear two peaks more and and they correspond to the planes 200 and 300 octorombic planes, respectively. For the H3 sample, uh, there was a crystallinity improvement too, but not as high as in the case of the 25 milligrams millig concentration. Uh, we observe another pit at uh, 40, uh, 44 uh, grades of those theta degrees, and it was identified as P3HT oxidation. Uh, we can say for all our P3HT films, they are semi-crystalline, and the 17 concentration wasn't enough to crystallize a layer, even when it is anil. For the 50 milligrams concentration, the crystallinity of the anil film was not as good as for the 55 milligrams. It can be explained due to the higher P3HT concentration in the solution over, overpasses the solubility product and it avoids a complete P3HT dissolution. So the best XRD result was for the anil sample with 25 milligrams of P3HT per milliliter concentration. 
now we can explain Raman spectra for every anil PTHT sample. For H1, uh, we can see only two Raman moods corresponding to PTHT that are located in this in these positions. And for uh, sample H2 and H3, we we found all uh, all the corresponding um, vibrational modes reported for this kind of compound. Uh, all these positions um, corresponding uh, to PTHT, if they are corresponding in specific uh, to every uh, bond uh, into the into the molecular. Okay, in Figure One. In figure four, sorry, uh, measurements of optical diffuse reflectance were made by uh, UVB spectroscopy. Cubel common function was used to obtain tau light plus, and Bankat values were determined. Bankat values for uh, every sample was uh, a value of 1.91 electron volts in average. This value coincides with the Bangau reported in the literature for P3HT or thrombic crystal. Now we present in table one a summary of P3HT field properties. First, um, we have thickness measurements with values from 60 to 248 nanometers. The increase of the concentration in the precursor solution causes an increase in field thins as expected. Next, we can see Bangat values to every sample concentration. And as we mentioned, it is around 1.9 electron volts in average. Finally, crystal sizes are shown. We see they were increased after the annealing process to the 17 and 25 milligrams per milliliter, being 25 milligrams concentration, the highest crystallized size increase. In contrast, uh, for the 50 milligrams concentration, the heat treatment didn't cause an increase of the crystallite size. This seems to confirm uh, the fact that the best PTHT concentration in the precursor solution is the one that corresponds to 25 milligrams per milliliter concentration. And to finish this uh, work research, we present the conclusion. In the present work, we prepare P3 HT thin films at three different con different concentrations. Uh, the precursors uh, they were deposited by a spin coating method. Uh, the obtained films had good adherence to the substrate. The 25 milligrams per milliliter concentration for the spin coating solution achieved the best crystallinity for the anil deposited films. Below this concentration, the fields are highly non-crystallized, while above it, the solubility in chlorophyll seems, seems to be above the limit, causing inferior results uh, than for the 25 milligrams per milliliter pH, P3HT concentration in the solution. The thermal treatment is a very important step to reduce the not uh, crystalline phase and increase the polycrystalline of the PTHT films. The energy Vanguard was confirmed to be around 1.9 electron volts in average. And that's all for this research work. Thank you very much for your attention. Do you have any questions or suggestions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have thank you have your thank question. You your question. Any question? Any question? Any question? A ver si, a ver, escucha.
Sí. Ah, ok. I hear you. I hear you. I have two, two questions. The first one is, uh, how did you measure the thickness that you are reporting? Mm -hmm. How did you measure uh, the thickness? Uh, thickness. Ajá. Uh -huh. Thickness was according, we were in increasing the concentration of PTHT in the solution, in the precursor solution. Uh -huh. Yes, but uh, how were the, uh, these measurements? Ah, uh, we measured by uh, perferometer. Ah, perferometer. Oh. Okay. Yes, yes, it's okay. And the other question is, uh, is not possible to observe a trend in the bank up values that you are reporting in the table? There is no trend of the, of the bank up. Why? It's normal. It was an expected result. Uh, I so can hear you very well. Can you? Ask me the question again, please. Uh, no, it's not a bang up. In the crystallite size, it's not observed ah, okay. uh, a trend. Why? Uh, you are uh, buying the, uh -huh. the concentration. Sí. I, uh, I understand you, Jet. Uh -huh. um, there, is a, uh, there is an tendency in the values of crystallite size because uh, uh, we uh, observe and suppose that the uh, solu solubility for every concentration that we use uh, is mm, the more adequate to, to get a good solutions and, the, and the, there isn't um, direct, direct um, proportion between the, the quantity, the quantity of the PTHT and, and the, the crystal size and nanometers measurement only for the two first uh, samples. But uh, this, uh, it wasn't happened with the HT sample. Okay, but uh, uh, what is in general, uh, we we thought it, it was uh, due to the sol solubility of every quantity of the PTHT in the solution. Uh, I want to make a comment. Uh, there is problem with the uh, connection in the room. Uh, we cannot hear the questions very clearly. Uh, you have problem with sound. Please try to correct that. Okay. Okay. You, you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yet. Okay. You can hear me? Yes, but not clearly. Okay. We have a question for PHRT Ichan, please. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your presentation. So I am uh, Dr. Farhati from the University of Patna. I have uh, two questions concerning your interesting work. So the first one is related to uh, uh, the effect of the aninin on the crystalline structure of the uh, of the film. Okay. So the what band is the gap question about the crystallite size? No, the, it's it's about the band gap variation as a function of the concentration. Uh, in this table, in this table we. Uh, you show that the band gap is can be varied using the uh, using different concentrations. What is the main reason behind this variation? Okay, there is a, a variation, but we have to consider two 
Ajá, de, de, de desviation. Uh -huh. If you consider uh, plus less this variation, uh, the value of what the bank got practically is the, is the same. There is only a very little variation between uh, all the samples. Yes. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, the possibility to uh, to to elaborate a graded band gap uh, film using different variation or uh, variations of uh, the, uh, the the concentration or successive growth of the the film uh, of several thin films uh, using this method. Um, are you asking me about the, the method to get the Vanguard value? No. Uh, recently, gra graded band gap technology have gained a great uh, deal of attention in solar cell applications. So, graded band gap is uh, using, uh, using uh, several uh, band gaps values uh, during the thickness over the, the wall thickness of the film. So uh, I think you can real, uh, you can you can uh, you can deposit graded band gap film using this technology using varied concentrations. Is it possible or no? Mm, no, uh, this uh, this method uh, spin coating deposition uh -huh, uh, give us only only layers with. Uh, a uh, few na nanometers in this in this case uh, for our better sample we we have uh, around uh, 90 to 100 nanometers for us is uh, is mm, sufficient uh, to to use in solar cells applications yes yes thank you thank you very much for your uh... Our presentation. It's interesting. Let me comment uh, something. In this case, uh, we, we don't uh, have the intention to have a graded band gap. Uh, yes. As uh, Rossi said uh, before, uh, the band gap is more or less the same for all the, the samples. Uh, uh, by using a spin coating, if you have different materials, maybe you can get different band gaps and uh, a kind of a, a grading, okay, but using yes. different uh, materials. In this case, is uh, just one material with uh, more or less the same band, band gap. We don't have any grading. Yes, yes, I I, I agree with you. We, we don't, don't have. have we don't I ask it. I ask it about the possibility okay, to have you. a grading. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next talk is for Odin Reyes Vallejo. Is here? Uh, yes, I am here. Can Perfect. you hear me? Presentation, please. Uh, yes, With the wait, name wait a minute. Chemical Battle Deposition of uh, Copper Oxide T films in FTO substrates. Effect of sequential deposition. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, thanks for for the opportunity. Uh, this is part of the team that work in this uh, study. Uh, we deposited a uh, cuprous oxide uh, by CBD on FTO substrate, uh, uh, and the deposition was uh, the experiment were done in the Instituto de Energías Renovables at Atunam, and we collaborated with Unicach and Simvestab. Uh, well, to be honest, this this work was uh, thought for uh, the construction of solar cells, uh, mainly uh, to develop uh, hold transporting layers for perovskite solar cells. However, we have some uh, problems when we deposit perovskite in the in the material. Uh, the perovskite uh, tends to uh, decompose. Uh, this was uh, mainly because at, at the end we have uh, some hydroxyl groups that tends to decompose the, the perovskite. So we have to 
to look for another application of these films. Uh, and we consider the, the use of this film for the for hydrogen evolution reaction in a photoelectrochemical solar cells. Uh, this kind of, ten of technology can be considered as a combination of solar cells and electrolysis, electrolysis system. Uh, however, th there are a lot of uh, limitations for this technology, uh, mainly because we have a, a contradictory uh, cases, uh, because we have to, to have a material with great uh, light ab absorption, uh, at the same time, uh, great electrical transport, but uh, a high uh, chemical stability. So at, at, at the end, uh, only having one material, uh, it's very complicated to 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 mix three, these three properties. So, uh, in reality, the, uh, when we want to to produce to develop a photo photoelectric electrochemical cell, uh, we prefer to use uh, different different layers or or many layers. So, uh, I I would like to give a little context of of, of the work. Uh, cuprous oxide is a, a material, uh, a low-cost low material uh, made with abundant uh, materials. Uh, they are not toxic. Uh, the band gap uh, can be tunable from y 18.8 to 2.8 uh, electron volts. Uh, it has a correct band alignment for hydrogen production. Uh, at the beginning, six years ago, when we started this research, uh, there were very few research. Uh, uh, mainly, uh, we found around uh, four to five uh, articles of, uh, of papers. So we we choose these two two papers, one by a Chinese group and the other one by Grothendorf. In the first case, uh, uh, the Chinese group uh, they proposed to use uh, uh, hydro hydrofluoric acid in order to. Uh, make a deterioration of the surface of the substrate and to promote the, the adherence of the material. Uh, however, in our case, th that's very complicated because we wanted to paste it in the F FTO uh, substrate. Uh, another investigation by Grosanov uh, suggests that if you use uh, uh, copper sulfide, you can increase the adherence of the second material. In this so the problem to, to paste this material by uh, chemical by deposition is that once, once the material is uh, deposited, of, uh, once the material is formed in the bulk solution, it tends to immediately to precipitate because it is very unstable on the, on the solution. So we choose these two uh, research and we mix uh, the, the both research. We use the, the formula of uh, the Chinese group and we use the the first uh, uh, film of cuprous, uh, sulf, copper sulfide in order to to see what happened. Uh, we observe, we deposit a, a film. However, this film was very opaque. So, in order to improve this deposition, uh, we use uh, triethanolamine in order to increase the, the appearance and to promote more adherence. Uh, triethanolamine is a uh, decay factor uh, to pro to promote the adherence of these uh, films because the nitrogen in the center has two electrons, uh, which can work as a, as a chelator, so uh, they uh, kidnap the uh, metallic ions, so the rate reaction is slower, so this allows to, us to, to deposit the, the material. Uh, in, in a previous report, we have uh, uh, measured the effect of triethanolamine. Uh, when we increase the triethanolamine amount, uh, we have observed a, a relevant increase of uh, thickness. However, at the same time, we have observed a decrease in the electrical properties, uh, the reduction of uh, uh, conductivity. Uh, this is mainly by two reasons. We have observed a uh, change in the preferential, preferential orientation from the plane, plane one, 111 to the plane 2200. Uh, this is reported that this material has a, an, an, an isotropy, uh, which means that the most conductive uh, films are reported for the when the material is oriented to the plane one one, and when it's oriented to the plane two zero zero, uh, a decrease in the conduction is, is observed in the conductivity is observed. Uh, and the other one that we have observed is that when we increase increase the thickness, 
we observe a reduction in the structural disorder measured as a strain, as a urbach energy. So with this information, uh, we decided to, to, de to develop this, uh, this research in which we uh, use a first layer of copper sulfide and then we, uh, we uh, perform the chemical bath deposition up to four times. Uh, once we obtain the films, we use it uh, as a photocathode uh, for hydrogen production. So this is the, well, this, this is the conventional formula of we use. Uh, copper sulfate as copper source, uh, sodium citrate as a first complexing agent, dextrose as a reduction agent, triethanolamine as a complementary uh, complexing agent, and sodium hydroxide as a oxidizing agent. Uh, well, uh, we observe more or less the same tendency that we are observing when we increase the, the triethanolamine amount. We observe a change in the oriental prefer uh, preferential orientation to the from the plane one 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 to the plane two zero zero zero, uh, which means a, a reduction in the in the conductivity. How, however, it's important to to mention, as you can see in the in the table, uh, in the part of uh, thickness, we observe an increase in the thickness in the first three deposition. However, in the fourth deposition, we don't observe a drastic increase. We don't observe we don't observe the the same tendency. So at the end, it's probably that, that the convection process or the heating process in the final film uh, improves or uh, change the electrical properties of, of the film because we observe a same tendency in uh, uh, some films that we deposited by microwave, microwave assisted uh, chemical de deposition. In that films, we observe that after 30 minutes, uh, we didn't uh, increase the, the the films. However, the electrical properties were were increased. So uh, uh, um, the problem of this film is that I don't I can't uh, measure uh, whole, whole effect because the films are deposited on FTO. And when I deposited on uh, conventional glass slide, I I can measure uh, I can measure uh, uh, impedance, uh, electrical impedance, electrochemical impedance. So it's a, a little problem to combine these two, two, two techniques because when I use glasses like very different films when I use uh, FTO substrates. Uh, uh, when we uh, perform the optical characterization, uh, we observe a clear uh, red shift of the films when we increase the number of uh, deposits. Uh, you, you can see an increase in the number of rings or the inter in construct interference, uh, which means or which is related with an increase in the in the thickness, but also uh, a decrease in the amplitude of the fringe uh, are observed. This means or this is related with a decrease or a increase of the roughness in, in the surface of the films. Uh, also, uh, you can see uh, in the in the second plot. Uh, uh, the absorption coefficient it's a, a very very good uh, uh, absorption coefficient in order to to develop a solar cell technology uh, how, however the the band gap is is very is very high these are are the the films uh, as the number of deposit uh, is increased uh, we lost the the morphology, the morphology even if we use uh, less triethanolamine we can obtain a very good uh, uh, morphology, uh, we observe a triangular morphology of, of the particles. However, when we increase the, the amount of, of triethanolamine or increase the number of deposit, we observe a deterioration of the, of the surface. This is uh, in accordance with what we have observed in optical uh, characterization. Uh, we perform the, the electrochemical uh, characterization. In this case, I present the space, the impedance uh, uh, electrochemistry. Uh, as you can see in all the films, we observe a, a negative slope, which is related with a PTA behavior, uh, which is reported in, in the literature. And we observe a, an increase in the flat band potential. Uh, at, at the end with this flat band potential, we, we consider this uh, potential as the balance band. Uh, we add the, the band gap and we can uh, obtain the conduction band. And so we can uh, plot 
against the evolution of hydrogen and oxygen uh, reaction. And we can observe that these uh, materials in all cases are, uh, are good for, uh, at least are, are suitable for hydrogen production. Uh, also from the slope, we can obtain the, the carriers. As you can see, uh, as the number of the, the position increase, we observe a decrease in the carriers, uh, which is in, in agreement with a uh, previous studies uh, we reported. Uh, and it's in accordance with, uh, with a decrease in the Urbach energy and in the strain. Uh, also, we perform a photoelectrochemical characterization. We uh, use a, a lamp uh, calibrated at AM 1.5 uh, in, in distance. So as you, as you can see, the, the, th the thinnest uh, film and the thickest film are the most uh, photoconductive. Uh, th uh, for the thinnest film is uh, something that we have ex expected because with, uh, in previous reports we have uh, observed the, the same tendency. However, it's very interesting that uh, the thickest film is the, is presents highest uh, photoconductivity, uh, which probably is related with this last part I, I mentioned before, the, the convention or the heating effect that when the uh, film doesn't grow uh, anymore, uh, probably the electrical properties uh, increases. Uh, I don't know if the mobility could increase. Uh, uh, as, I, as I said before, I couldn't uh, measure that, but it's something that could, could, could happen. So at the end, the conclusion is that when we increase the, the number of the position, we obviously uh, increase the, the thickness. Uh, we observe the change from the plane 1, 1 to the plane 2, 0, 0 which promotes a, a reduction in, in the conductivity. Uh, uh, however, in all cases, uh, this material are a good candidate as photocathodes. Uh, however, we have to decrease the, the thickness of the films to increase the, the values of the photocurrent. Uh, our values are more or less in the top of the chemical uh, deposition. However, we are very far from the highest values reported, mainly by electrodeposition uh, processes. Uh, another aspect that I would like to, to mention is that we can obtain at least or close to two microns of thickness, which could be uh, uh, interesting for solar cell technology. However, we have to fix the vanguard. We have to decrease the value of the, of the vanguard. And, well, this is part of the team we work. And this is my uh, inf uh, personal information. If you have something, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any question? Any question? Any question? Okay. Odin, uh, can you present that table where you are reporting the texture coefficient? Yes. Uh, there, uh, how can you explain that you, in the case of the 2D Support to the you are obtaining a texture coefficient of a, for the two zero zero orientation higher than the one 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 plane. Why is so different? What we have observed, according to other reports, is that to the increase in the order of the growth uh, uh, provokes the, the tendency to, to grow to this, uh, to this direction. Uh, for example, in the case of uh, the Chinese group, they use another uh, complex in agent. I, I don't remember now what uh, uh, they use. Let me see. Uh, I, I don't know, citratium 
I don't, I don't remember the, the, the complex that I am, but they, they use uh, this agent and we uh, they observe the, the same tendency where they increase the, the amount of the complexing agent, uh, a general tendency to, to increase the, the peak to zero, zero is, is promoted. Um, in another, another report by electrodeposition, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the, the complexing agent, they found the same. So we, we think that uh, the complexing agent not, not, not only pro promotes the, the reordering of the material, but also the increase of the band gap of the, of the, of the material, because my band gap is very, very high from uh, reported of the literature. Okay, but as, as any other has questions, <laughs> uh, let, let me continue with this discussion. Uh, uh, according to the spectra, the 2D spectra, the, the intensity of the, these two peaks are similar, the 111 and the 200. They are similar. You are, you are not presenting the formula for the calculation, but we know that this, the intensity of this peak uh, uh, relative to the to the addition. Doctor, sorry, the, se cortó la comunicación. Can you repeat the, the question, please? Uh, okay. Can you put the, the same slide, please? The slide. Yes, yes, this is okay. Okay. Uh, you heard me? Yes, yes, I heard. Okay, okay. In the 2D spectra, uh -huh. the density of the peaks are similar. Ah, uh, yes. But you are reporting a text to coefficient of these two peaks uh, different, very different. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, the, are, the uh, text to the text. The text to coefficient is, is reported. Uh, or calculated against the the pattern uh, of the PDF that I present here. So, uh, as you can see in the in the pattern, uh, the highest intensity is in the plane one one. So we are comparing with the pattern. So that that's why only a, a division of intensity against the other intensity. We are uh, reporting against against the intensity of the pattern. Uh, actually, in the in the text in the coefficient texture of formula, it, it is uh, considered. So th that's why uh, you can observe uh, very different values in uh, one 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 to two zero zero. But but if you can see in the in the pattern, uh, the the high of the pattern is like more than two times of the Two zero zero. That's that's the reason that I I report uh, zero point five, and in the other case one point five five. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Our next talk is from Daniel Trejo Samudio, and the presentation is structural and thermoelectric properties of zinc oxide. Tin oxide, uh, top it be with this uh, boot, tin films. This is the main title. Yeah. Yes, yeah, thank you. I can share my presentation. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only moderators. I can I can I can share my my presentation. I, I have problems. Uh, me dice que solo los organizadores pueden compartir.
I can copy. Okay. Okay. Can you try try on try your presentation please? Presentation please. You have permission to you have permission to have Your presentation. No, I had problems. I can share my presentation. No. Can you? Okay. Can you see my presentation? We can see. Yes, it. we can see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, good afternoon, my name is Daniel Trejo Zamudio. I am a postgraduate student at the Universidad Autónoma de Querétaro. Um, today I'm going to present some part of the, of, of the regime, titular structural and thermolytic properties of tin dioxide dotted with bismuth tin fuel. Well, uh, currently there are technologies to produce heat, mechanical and electrical energy for renewable and clean energy sources, such as solar, wind, hydro and bioenergy. However, the energy produced is not fully used, and statistical results show that the more than 60 percent of this is wasted across the world, especially in form of heat. One way to take advantage of this wasted energy in form of heat is using the thermoelectric materials. The thermoelectric materials has the capacity to convert heat into electricity. Also, the system that uses thermoelectric materials offers some advantage. They are fitted with the environment. They are small, uh, they can work in a wide temperature range, and they have a long period of life. Currently, they have a great variety of the material, thermoelectric materials. There are materials based on metals, uh, polymers, and semiconductors. So the principal problem with the thermoelectric materials is the efficiency. The efficiency of the thermoelectric material is based in the figure of the merit, the CT, the figure of the merit is given by the equation number one, donde alpha, where alpha is the civet coefficient, sometimes denoted by S. Um, uh, the sigma is the electrical conductivity and K is the thermal conductivity. Also, when the result, the, the result of the multiplication of the civet coefficient square and the electrical conductivity is known as power factor. Well, the figure number one shows the dependence with these factors, uh, these parameters of you know, the thermolytic material with respect to the charcoal concentration. According with the figure, the ideal uh, charcoal uh, concentration is in the order of the 18 to uh, 22 that correspond to semiconductor. But this reason, the semiconductors are the best material for the thermoelectric application. Well, uh, the semiconductors uh, encompass uh, various materials, including the metal oxide. Uh, the metal oxides offer uh, some advantage over other semiconductors, such as the, the sulfides. Uh, oxides are fed to, to the environment and they are stable at high temperatures. 
the tin dioxide is considered a member of transparent conductive oxide, and this oxide has been used in solar cells, the sense of transparent conductivity electrodes, catalytic supports, because uh, of first some uh, the chemical advantage and good physical properties. This uh, oxide is has a good mechanical resistance. Its oxide crystal is, is in the tetragonal rutile structure uh, called caciterite, and also it generally considered an oxygen deficient anti semiconductor. It has a band gap greater than the three electron volts, and he has a charge uh, uh, carry concentration greater than the order on the 19, and which can be brought by doping. Uh, did make that it is uh, ideal for thermolytic application uh, according with the figure number number one. But uh, the thermolytic materials need a low thermal conductivity to obtain the maximum efficiency. One way to, uh, to obtain a low thermal conductivity in these materials is creating a more or less crystalline quality structures. In this way, the mean flat path of the phonons is reduced. When, uh, some strategies to reduce the low uh, thermal conductivity include the point effects in the solid structure and that include also nanoscale precipitates and grain boundaries. The point effects can be achieved by doping or logging. Doping or heat treatment can also affect the crystallinity of the material. In this case, if a material has many crystals, the, the material uh, has main, este, many grain boundaries, and this can help to have a long thermal conductivity since each grain boundary allows phonons to scatter. Uh, the study of this mood of uh, thin dioxin films, since they have been observed to exhibit insulating properties. In other words, uh, the, when bismuth doped samples show more small, smaller crystals, a rock surface and highly disordered structure compared when the samples undoped, indicating the crystalline deterioration with decreasing B doping concentration. In this, work, we, in this work, we report the synthesis of the tin fields on the tin dioxan and tin dioxan doped with bismuth, disordered to study the field the uh, bismuth on the thermolytic properties of this oxide. Well, in this slide, uh, we present the methodology of the preparation of the tin fields. In general, the procedure consists of the two stages. The first stage is the preparation of the precursor solution, and the second stage is the deposit of the tin field band spray pyrolysis. The figure number two shows the general procedure, and the precursor solution is obtaining mixing ethanol with tin chloride, chloride lithiatrate. Um, and the solution is kept in the stirring for 50 minutes at 65 Celsius degree with an initial concentration of 0.2 molar. When, uh, when the time is over, five drops of hydrochloric acid is added and the uh, stirring is maintained for two hours. When the uh, when, when, to do the doping, uh, bismuth nitrate is added before adding the acid. When, when the solution is cold, the deposit of the tin fields are was carried by spray pyrolysis. In this case, an air brush uh, was used for this purpose. The table number one presents the condition for the deposit of the tin fields. Uh, this table presents the control parameters and the value for each parameter. Each parameter is important in this, in this case. Uh, it's important to uh, mention the supra temperature. The, 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 the temperature was 400 Celsius degree, and the deposit flow in this case was 5 milliliter by minute. Also, uh, the gas employed was nitrogen because uh, uh, there is no compressed air system in the laboratory, laboratory, and it was also decided to have less oxygen in the sample to create the efficiency of this element and have an oxide with conductivity properties. Uh, the samples were labeled as SO underscore exponent XB, where exponent X is the bismuth and tin atomic radio, 
the values for exponent x were 0, 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 3. This slide presents some results about the investigation. The figure number three shows the diffractograms for all the samples obtained. The diffractograms were compared with the corresponding curve that corresponds to Cassiterite, and the sample shown only a single phase with a diffraction peak that indicates presence of the impurities or the dopant. Uh, some signals uh, are not present in all the samples uh, because it exceeds the effect of the dopant. Also, when the concentration of bismuth increases, uh, the samples present loss in the crystallity quality, and this effect is reflected in, in poorly def uh, definite patterns with respect to the undopant sample. The, by the other hand, in the figure number four, uh, the pattern shown, uh, the figure shows the, uh, the tie on the plane 110, and the, the according with the figure, when the concentration of the bismuth increase, the width of the peak increases too, um, and that in, indicates the, uh, the loss of the, of the crystalline quality in, in, the, in the samples. This is due to the, the effects that they produce the dopant in the, in the material lattices. In addition, it's a like shape of the center of the peaks to left is observed by the same reason by the presence of the dopant. The, this effect is considered due to the, the difference in the Yannick ready between the bismuth and the tin uh, ions, and the difference uh, causes distortion um, strain in the material lattices. I change the distance between atoms, and this causes this increase in the uh, width of the peak. Uh, this is like uh, present in the table number four, and this table presents the crystal size and the thickness of the samples. Uh, in this case, uh, in general, when the, the bismuth concentration increases, the crystal size decreases because, the, according with the literature, the dopant introduces point effects, and the point effects suppress the crystalline growth of the material. Uh, in the case, the, the thickness is the thickness is very similar for all the samples because all the samples were deposited with similar conditions. Uh, in in this case, when in the the table three presents the electrical properties of the samples. Uh, the table, uh, when, according with the, the results, the, the sample, the untapped sample is very close with the report in the literature. And the, the, the check carrier concentration is very close to the ideal with the thermoelectric applications, according with the figure number one. Um, in, when in general, uh, all the samples present uh, N-type conductivity. Uh, uh, that indicates that the uh, tin ion is replaced by the bismuth ion, but the charge concentration decreases in, the, uh, in all the samples uh, because the bismuth ion has fewer electrons with respect to the, the, tin, the tin ion. The, the, redu uh, the reduction of the, of the electrons in this case produce an increase in the electrical resistivity and decrease the electrical conductivity. This effect is shows in the figure number five. Uh, in general, when the concentration of bismuth increase, the, conduct, the electrical conductivity decreases because it exceeds uh, a, a fewer, a fewer electrons in, in, the, in the samples. Uh, also, uh, mobility decreases because, according with the results in the X-ray diffraction, exceeds more boundaries because the crystals are more uh, are more uh, are small, and the boundaries and the effects produced by the dopant uh, interact with the electrons. And the mobility of the electrons decreases. Because the electrons participate with the boundaries the, of the of the crystals. Um, finally, the uh, the table number four presents the civic coefficient and power factor for all the samples. Uh, in this case, the 
sample on double present the uh, low the lowest civil coefficient and the sample with one percent of bismuth present the highest value of the civil coefficient because uh, when the, the dopant k in solution samples in this case uh, also the the case in the, the check concentration the thermal conductivity decrease and the according to the, the literature the civil coefficient increase this uh, like shows in the in the figure number six uh, finally the power factor uh, the base power factor value was for the sample on dopant because the sample uh, has the highest uh, electrical conductivity in combination with the civet coefficient uh, uh, the, 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 is the is the best the best sample in this in this work in conclusion team fields on the team dioxide and team dioxide dopant with bismuth were obtained by the spray pyrolysis technique with a supra temperature of 400 celsius degree the samples dopant with bismuth have the smaller crystallities with respect to the dopant sample and the substitu uh, substitution of the tin ion or bismuth ion decreased the concentration of charge carriers and increased the electrical resistivity. In this condition, favor the problem of the seeded coefficient by having a more insulation material with respect to the open material. Uh, the electrical con uh, the conductivity decreased, uh, which affects the thermal properties of the tin fields. Uh, for this reason, that the open field has the highest value. Uh, in general, the incorporation of the uh, bismuth affects the electrical and thermal con uh, properties of the material. Uh, so the dopant material is not suitable for thermal application. In this case, consider it only the, the, the power factor. However, the quantification of thermal conductivity is necessary to determine the figure of the merit values and check see it also decreases as the power factor. The, this is the reference employed in the in the presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. We have time for one question. We have uh, questions. That one. Yes. Okay. With the same effect of annealing of the structural and optical properties of a scooter, silicon carbide, silver, silicon carbide multilayer. Please. Thank you, Mr. Tano. Do you see my presentation? We cannot see. Okay, we can say it. Thank you. So I am Dr. Farhati Isham from University of Batna, Algeria. So I will present my work entitled Effects of Annealing on the Structural and Optical Properties of Sputtered Silicon Carbide on Silver on Silicon Carbide Multilayer. 
So the presentation outline are given as follows. First, we start with an introduction describing the importance of silicon carbide material for several applications, including photovoltaic and uh, optical sensors uh, applications. Secondly, we describe the design and the experimental methods used to elaborate our uh, structure. The third section is dedicated to the result and discussion. And finally, we conclude with some remarks and future perspectives. Amorphous silicon carbide material has received a great deal of attention owing to its appropriate electrical and optical properties, which makes it highly attractive for several applications, including power electronics, namely power diodes, temperin transistors, and shocky diodes. Besides this we material... Can say, please, you can not yes. see your presentation in presentation mode, and we cannot see the next slides. We can see only the, next, the first uh, slides. Okay, this is the three slides. You, you can uh, put in the presentation mode. Uh, do, do you see my presentation? Can you see? Yeah, but, uh, uh, this is in addition, in addition mode. You can put it in presentation. Can you put your presentation in presentation mode? Yes. Please. Is it clear? This is in addition, not in presentation. In the number Can number. you click that uh, big screen? The left side? I didn't understand. What is the problem? Uh, can you put it uh, presentation mode? Like uh, we can see only your small screen. Can you make it big? In yes. Only press F2 please. Can you see my presentation? Okay. Is it clear now? Not it. Can can you again click that button? Again, click the presentation Okay, if you can change the slides in this mode, okay. We can see the... Can, can I present the like this? Okay, you, you can see the, your presentation of life. Yes, please, go ahead. Continue. So, amorphous silicon material has received a great deal of attention owing to its appropriate electrical and optical properties, which makes it highly attractive for several applications, including power diodes, thin transistors, and Schottky diodes. 
Besides, this material can be also applied for photovoltaic applications and optoelectronic uh, devices as an absorber material or buffer for solar cells. Several challenges <coughs> associated with, uh, with solar cells and, and power electronic devices, such as low, low on current self-heating effects, huge power consumption, and material deposition problems, which requires uh, which, which requires high drive current capability, low resistive losses, reduced energy consumption, low fabrication cost, and improved breakdown characteristics. For this purpose, in order to overcome these challenges, new low cost materials and designs uh, design approaches are of great importance. So the aim of this work is related to four principal points. The first one is proposing new amorphous silicon carbide absorber material based on inter intermediate metallic film. The second one is e experimental elaboration and characterization of the proposed structure using efficient low cost experimental facilities. Then investigating the optical properties of the prepared amorphous silicon carbide thin film based on multi-layer aspect. And finally, analyzing the effect of thermal treatment on the optical properties of the prepared multi-layer structures based on silicon carbide and silver materials. The proposed, <laughs> the proposed design consists of uh, using multi-layer structures, uh, structure based on amorphous silicon carbide and silver material, and then a, a, another amorphous silicon carbide thin film, as it is shown in this figure. So to achieve this, uh, this goal, a successive growth of silicon carbide sub-layers and AG films is required. The, the experimental investigation of our new silicon carbide on silver on amorphous silicon carbide multi-layer uh, structure is based on RF sputin experimental apparatus, which is used to elaborate the structure. So firstly, we clean it up the substrates in the commercial detergent, drying and uh, under a nitrogen jet process. Uh, and thereafter, a successive earth sputtering of amorphous silicon carbide and uh, and silver sublayers was performed. And finally, annealing effects were induced at 500 degree to to show the effect of the thermal treatment on the optical performances of the proposed structure. The deposition parameter of the elaborated amorphous silicon carbide film are summarized in this table. Uh, characterization, several characterization methods were used to assess the performance of structural and optical performances of the elaborated structure. So we used XRD technique uh, to analyze the structural properties of the multi-layer structure. Then the optical performances of the prepared structure uh, with and without annealing effects were investigated by spectrophotometry. Uh, the associated optical and electrical parameters were extracted and the results are thoroughly discussed. This figure shows the XRD spectra associated with the prepared amorphous silicon carbide uh, samples with and without annealing effects. So the results demonstrate that the prepared amorphous silicon carbide on silver and amorphous silicon carbide multi-layer films shows, shows an amorphous state. The annealed structure is also amorphous. Uh, this is mainly due to the low thickness of the prepared of the developed films, uh, including uh, silicon carbide. The use of high substrate temperature can allow the crystallization phase uh, through enhancing the migration ability of the deposited particles. 
after performing the, the spectrophotometry characterization, the associated absorbance spectra of both structures with and, uh, with and without anion effects are depicted in these fugues, in which we can notice that the proposed amorphous silicon carbide on silver on amorphous silicon carbide film demonstrate enhanced UV absorbance capability as compared to that offered by the conventional amorphous silicon carbide films. In addition, the annealed structure exhibits very low absorption over the visible spectral range and boosted UV absorbance capabilities, which can achieve to near perfect absorption, UV absorption. So this, the, the obtained results can make the multilayer structure and their anionine effects highly suitable for the elaboration of solar blind photo UV photodetectors. So in this work, a new amorphous silicon carbide on silver on amorphous silicon carbide thin film is proposed and elaborated using a simple process based on RF magnetron technique. The proposed thin film is prepared using a sequential based sputum process using successive uh, growth of amorphous silicon carbide and silver materials. Another process was applied to show the effect of heat treatment on the structural and optical properties of the investigated trilayered structure. XRD measurements showed the amount of state of the fabricated silicon carbide based samples with and without annealing effects. Besides, it was revealed that the use of annealing effects can enhance the UV absorbance capability and reduce the absorption behavior over the visible range. These outstanding, outstanding electrical electronic and optical properties make the prepared multilayer structure highly suitable for the emerging optoelectronic and photovoltaic applications. For the perspective, this work can be extended by elaborating a new UV photodetector based on annealed amorphous silicon carbide on silver on amorphous silicon carbide multilayer structure, which is expected to offer high responsivity and solar blind property. Further investigating the capability of the prepared multilayer structure for photovoltaic applications seems also interesting, where new electrical characterizations should be carried out. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions, please. Okay. Arturo, please. Hey, I, I have two questions. I okay. didn't understand if uh, the, the results that you have are a consequence of the three layers or it is a, uh, a measurement of the amorphous silicon carbide uh, layer only. And the second question is, how do you explain the, the results? Uh, uh, in particular, the increased absorbance in the UV after the annealing. Thank you for your question. For the first question, so the characterization and the, the are made for the multilayer structures. So the wall multilayer structures based on silicon carbide, on silver, on silicon carbide film. And compared with that of the conventional structure based on only silicon carbide film. Also, the, anil the effect of heat treatment is investigated uh, by applying, uh, applying, uh, applying annealing effects on the multilayer structure. For the second question, the high UV absorbance capability is mainly dedicated to the, uh, the, the, the insertion of a metallic thin film at the, uh, at the, uh, in, the, uh, in the interface, 
between both silicon carbide materials, thin films, so which can increase the absorption capability of the UV range by the plasmonic effects. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Another question? No one? Uh, I have a question. What is the yes. thickness of the metal, of the silver uh, layer? I didn't hear you. Can you please repeat your question? What is the thickness, the thickness of the silver layer? It's about seven nanometers. Okay. And we can you uh, say that you have uh, absorption in the uh, UV range with a glass glass substrate? I didn't understand. So you, you use a uh, glass substrate, yes? Yes. And the glass uh, substrate absorb uh, in the UV ultraviolet range, yeah? The, the glass substrate absorbs uh, UV uh, light? I, yes. Yeah. I we, think can, uh, we can do separate uh, both effects. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the thank you. Of, thank you. Our next talk is from Luz Margarita Vacasar Villatoro with the talk and a characterization of gallium dotted zinc oxide thin films deposited by ultrasonic spray pyrolysis technique. Conductors materials, the transparent conducting oxide. Um, my topic is characterization of gallium double oxide fields deposited by ultrasonic spray pyrolysis technique. This paper is in Clarate, the PhD, Maria de la Luz. Hola, la palabra a Arturo Maldonado Álvarez, a Sota Cari, José Josué Rodríguez Pizano. This work outlines introductions, experimental details, results and discussions, conclusion, acknowledgement and reference. To begin with the topics, it's necessary to clarify that the transparent conduction outside most essential comply with two very important points. Number one. High electrical conductivity, carrier concentrations 10 to 20 centimeters to minus three or higher, resistivity 
10 to the minus 4 omega centimeter and high transparency to visible light 80%. Uh, application example for TCOs in display the smart the smart TV, smartphone, um, solar cell, smart windows, aircraft class. Uh, main characteristic of Sinoxide and Duffet is 70% the transitance, bang up, 3 points, 28 electron volts, exit combining energy of 60 million electron volts, not toxic, a stable phase, hexagonal site, double 10 to the minus 4 omega centimeter and low cost. They allow the best electrical properties, the reason for preferring gallium as a dopant is that the ionic radius of this element is close to the radius, to the ionic radius of zinc of 0 0.74 angstrom. The ionic radius is very close to the gallium, the 0 0.62. Okay. The diagram to use ultrasonic is spray pyrolysis system. The advantage of this the system is deposit dog films with a wide variety of the elements and concentrations on impurities does not require monocrystalline substrate as used by chrome techniques. The rate of ground and thickness in the films can be usually controlled under a wide range of deposit variables. Substrate temperature range from the 150 degrees. Easy of changing spray solutions during film depositions, thus different layers and concentrations get Gradients or impurities can be heard across the films. In the system, the pyrolytic reactions in a close sol sol soluble. This solution is transported in the form of gas toward a hot substrate. Substrate where say pyrolytic reaction take place. In the experimental detail, number one, current and substrate cleaning. And then, preparation of solution separately and then mixing. In this point, I'm in the first thing I take 0 0.2 molar and then gallium. 0, 0 0.2 molar. Follow is turn in the solutions at one hyphen five atomic percent. The solution is transferred in the form gas or small drop toward a hot substrate. In the, in the equipment. The procedure commonly used to produce the drop is through two nozzles. One transport the solutions and the other a pressurized gas stream, which atomizes the solution. After six minutes, 15 seconds, we proceed to remove the films deposited on the glass. Finally, the samples are characterized 
to know their structural, morphological, and electrical properties. Results and discussion. A structural parameters and data phenotype. In the figure three, the X-ray diffraction patterns, I can see the, the diffraction was used to confirm the formation of synoptite steel film with hexagonal wood side crystal structure in the spectrum is observed the preferential orientation in the plane 002 corresponding hexagonal word site. This result is compatible with the card number 00038-1240. With the patterns obtained result the structural parameters in the table one and, and the crystal size 20.77 nanometers are straight 5.6 and dislocation density 0, 0 0.00 23. In figure four, scanning electron microscopy in the image to confirm synoxide nanoparticles have hexagonal morphology, morphological format by the function the different nanocrystals. The hexagonal slides range the 20 to 440 nanometers. And structural and optical parameters. In atomic force microscopy, the average brain size 182 nanometers and roughness. 15 nanometers. In figure say the transmitted spectrum, I can see the transmittance, transmittance 80 percent, and bang up 3.35 electron volts. And the structural parameters, the synoxide gallium and the unit seven, the result contain the synoxide gallium, the one percent hyphen cinco atomic percent. In diffraction of samples, the big Preferential is 002, the hexagonal bursita. The parameters are structural and different value contents. I can see the variation, the two theta. Um, change the crystallite and the best crystallite is 2 gallium synoxide and dislocation density is the same. In morphological parameters um, I 
I can see that as hexagonal particle size decreases with increased value, atomic percent. Range the of 326 to 20, 208 nanometers. In a in atomic force, the grain side is the the the, the average is small the two value. In roughness is the same result. In the optical and electrical parameters is the same in is the same comportant this the same decrease the transmittance with increase atomic percent volume. The Bagan, the Banga, he changed the difference in atomic percent uh, for effect mass bursting. The transmittance decreased with increased volume the and electrical parameters, the best resistivity corresponding a three gallium synoxide. The mobility corresponding a one percent gallium in career concentration, five gallium. Is now tendency in these materials. In conclusion, based on the present result, the pure and gallium dub phenoxide fields are successfully deposited by ultrasonic spray pyrolysis technique. All fields show the 002 plane as preferential orientation and the formation of the bursite crystal structure was confirmed. The two theta value for peak 002 is slightly shifted after adding gallium to the synoxide tin films. For from fluorescent image, uniform and hexagonal shaped grains grain observed. The grain side varied the range the 20 hyphen with 150 nanometers. The small and well connected grains are seen from the DUSI AFM image. The size featured from AFM analysis is well matched with grain size from the same analysis. The transmittance the, of sample was slightly decreased with an increase in volume contained in the synoxide tin films. It's also observed the band gap is enhanced uh, from 3.35 to 3. 37 electron volts when gallium contains synoxide to feel increase. These results are compatible with the Gursita crystal structure of synoxide. The N-type conductivity with high carrier concentrations the 10 to 
19 centimeters to the minus 3 was corroborated from the electrical analysis. By comparing all these material properties, the sample contained those atomic percent for gallium showed the optimal conditions to the best crystalline properties, high transparency and low roughness than others. Nevertheless, it present a higher electric, electrical resistivity. Therefore, we consider that the best result is a three atomic, three atomic percent, which present the lowest resistivity. Hence, the gallium doping process in sinusite field can control the material properties which could be useful in various applications. Some reference. Acknowledgement, Conacid, Simvestab, CCE, and technical support at Simvestab, IPN. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Arturo. Arturo Morales. Uh, hello. Uh, please, can we see the, the slide with the results? I think uh, we number can 13 or something. Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Your question, Arturo. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am waiting for, for the slide with the results. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the one with the resistivity results. Yeah. This, this one. And uh, I, I can. I can say that there is no effect related to the gallium in your samples. Because if you see mobilities and uh, carrier concentrations are of the same order, okay? And uh, resistivity, as you say, and you uh, put a yellow color on what you consider is the best, uh, means that you have uh, an error less than 10 to the minus 4, okay, because you are uh, you are writing four decimals for your results. So uh, if, if, if you see a sample 1 and 4 and 5 and 3 uh -huh, are more or less the same. Mm -hmm. If you don't give an error for all of your results, we cannot say if, uh, uh, if there is any difference between these samples, okay? Uh, because uh, I don't believe that you have uh, errors le less than 10 to the minus three. Uh -huh. and, and, and then all these values are more or less the same, 0 0.08, 0 0.08 in the three cases. And only in the case of the, the two, the sample two, you see a slight, very slight difference. Okay, uh, in order to see to to say that uh, something is better, you need to see the variations of the or orders of magnitude. Huh? In this case, even you don't see any variation. Okay, and, and the same for for the other uh, parameters. If you give two decimals, for example, for mobility, means that you have an error of less than 10 to the minus three or 10 to the minus two, okay? Then you must give error in order to see 
the significance of your results. In this case, you don't have any variation for me, unless you can uh, you can say that uh, within the error, uh, uh, you can see a difference between these layers. That's my comment. Okay, thank you for your comment. Okay, we have that time. We can the next talk. Our next talk is from Francisco Javier Cano with the presentation MB absorptions by titanium dioxide, uh, graphene oxide, nanocomposites, a comparison of synthesis methods. Uh, good, good afternoon. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see. Yeah, can you hear me well? We can. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Okay, okay. 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 I, I will start my presentation. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, buenas tardes a todos. Uh, my name is Francisco Javier Gomez Cano. I'm going to present to you my work, uh, which is titled Methyl and Blood Absorption uh, by Titanium Dioxide, uh, Methyl and Blood Absorption by Titanium Dioxide and Graphene Oxide Nanocomposites, a comparison of the synthesis methods. The authors in this in this work are uh, here. So uh, and this work is gonna be presented in the in this uh, symposium, nanotechnology, materials and applications. So this is the briefly content of my presentation. I will start with an introduction, then the methodology we use in this, in this work, uh, some results we obtained it, and finally I, I will tell you the conclusions. The conclusions. The conclusions. The conclusions. Okay. The, the remo okay. Uh, the removal of dyes from the water is a difficult task, uh, since a difficult uh, it's a difficult task, uh, since there's currently no single treatment uh, or suitable process due to the complex nature of these substances. Like for example, there's a, a dye, methyl and blue. Methyl and blue is commonly used in different industries, like for example, textile, food, automotive, uh, among others. However, the problem here is that a uh, the problem begins when these uh, materials uh, are not are not longer part of the of the processes in these different industries and are dumped into the water bodies, uh, causing problems such as, for example, uh, increase of the hair rate, vomiting, necrosis. Uh, they can be mutagenic or carcinogenic. So there's different uh, alternatives to remove these uh, these uh, colorants of the water, like for example. Uh, they use different different materials. These different materials uh, have the function uh, as absorbents, coagulants, or photocatalytic materials. So, in general, these materials reduce the concentration of, of the different pollutants and or decomposed by the dye molecules and convert them uh, into less harmons, uh, harmful substances. So, one example of this material is titanium dioxide. Uh, Titanium dioxide is a really interesting material because it has been used to remove different contaminants of the water, air, uh, and, and different different contaminants. However, uh, in the absorption process, it has uh, the problem because uh, it has an absorption between 15 and 20 percent for methyl and blue, and that is a limitant for this for this material. That is why different authors around the world uh, propose different uh, strategies uh, for improve the properties of these materials, like for example, doping, coupling titanium dioxide with other materials, or optimization of the titanium dioxide morphology. However, in this work, uh, we are focused just in this part, coupling of titanium dioxide with other material. So in this case, uh, we are proposing to uh, use graphene oxide, and this is because uh, now, nowadays, the two dimensional materials uh, have emerged as a potential platforms for exploring uh, novels 
and unique properties that are found in other kinds of materials. So they have excellent properties, mechanical, excellent optical, mechanical, thermal, and electronic properties in a wide range of applications. So a graphene oxide is a sheet with functional, a graphene oxide is a sheet with, of graphene with different functional groups incorporated into the surface of the materials. These functional groups can be epoxide, hydroxide, a carboxyl, carbonyl, a, or other. So the objective in this work is was the preparation of titanium dioxide and graphene oxide nanocomposite to test them and remove it for methyl and blue diet. So this is a methodology we use it for a, a, to make a, or, or graphene oxide. We use in this case a, the TOR method. This is the description. The first step is a mixture of acid is prepared, a sulfuric and a, a phosphoric acid in a relation I1. Uh, then graphi graphite uh, powder is added uh, to a stirring mixture of acid. Then let it stir for three hours at around four degrees. Uh, the next step is add potassium permanganate. So it's important to say that with this potassium permanganate, we can control the level of oxidation in our materials. So the next step is a solution of a uh, water uh, and chloridic acid is added uh, drop wise. Then the ionized water is added, a uh, sonication to promote exfoliation of the different layers of, of graphene oxide, and centrifuge and wash with water as many times as necessary until a pH of seven is reached. And finally, a dye in an oven at uh, 65 degrees for around 12 hours. As a result of this, we obtained one graphene oxide. Then this graphene oxide was incorporated to titanium dioxide commercial. Uh, for this case, we used uh, two methods, two methodologies for the nanocomposites. The first method, uh, it, the first methodology, it was bulk milling. Uh, bulk milling is really uh, simple. In this case, we use a uh, 2% weight graphene oxide and 98% uh, weight commercial titanium dioxide a mechanical grinding and eight hours and 300 revolution per minute. And as a result of this, we obtained one nanocomposite, titanium dioxide and graphene oxide. The other methodology we used to make or the, the other nanocomposite, it was a photosonication. This is the description. The first step is weigh the material. In this case, we use the same amount, I mean 2% weight of graphene oxide. Uh, add uh, to baker with a ethanol separate uh, and sonic it for 15 minutes. Uh, the next step it was uh, uh, pour the content of the baker with graphene oxide into the baker with titanium dioxide. The fourth step it was sonic it of the mixture for uh, 25 minutes. Then magnetic steering under visible light source. And finally, diet at, around, at a 80 degrees for around 12 hours. And as a result of this, we obtain other uh, nanocomposites. I mean, in this case, we have two nanocomposites, uh, titanium dioxide and graphene oxide, uh, using two different methodologies and the same amount of graphene oxide, 2% and 98% of titanium dioxide. So in this slide, uh, I, I'm going to show you some residues we obtain uh, of the different materials. So this first uh, characterization is a XRD characterization about graphene oxide and graphite. Graphite. So it's a comparison in both materials, precursor material and graphite ox of and graphene oxide we obtain. Uh, in this case, we can observe that a, a sharp signal uh, in the graphite at around uh, 26, no, 26 uh, degrees corresponding to the 00 uh, to plane of the graphite. So on the other hand, uh, uh, in, the in the graphene oxide, it's observed that the intensity of this peak, I mean 002, decrease, uh, reduces intensity in comparison with the graphite original. And at the same time, we can observe how appears a peak at around 11, uh, corresponding to the 001 plane uh, of the graphene oxide. And being this an indicator that uh, of the oxidation in, in, in our material. So in this other slide, we have a comparison of the Raman spectra uh, for both materials, uh, graphite and graphene oxide we, we made. So uh, in Raman spectroscopy here in, in our graphene oxide, graphite, sorry, we can observe how uh, the presence of a strong G-band at around 1,500 
uh, attribute to the two uh, double bond carbons uh, stretching wire. Uh, the D band, and uh, we can observe the band, uh, D band at around 1,300, uh, which is attributed to the presence of defects uh, in, in the graphite material. So, on the other hand, in this graphene oxide in the red line, uh, a shift of the G band uh, toward high wavelengths uh, was observed, uh, this being attributed uh, to the formation of more sp3 states in the lattice. Uh, so, likewise, a change were observed uh, in the deep band since uh, because uh, of the incorporation of the more oxygen uh, groups, its intensity uh, increased and the signal broadened. So, in this other slide, I show you a comparison in the precursor material and, and graphene oxide. A FTER. So in this slide, we can observe the difference because with graphite, a, we, because with graphene oxide, it was possible to observe different functional groups in normal materials in comparison with a graphite, and that was other signal to prove a, we obtained and a, or or graphene oxide. So in this other slide, uh, I'm going to change uh, to the nanocomposites we obtained. So in this is XRD characterization of our nanocomposites. We can observe uh, the precursor titanium and a uh, commercial we, we start uh, in both nanocomposites we use, uh, we made, uh, I mean, for by photosonication and ball milling process. So in this case, uh, in both milling process, we can see that there is a mix of uh, phases. I mean, we can see uh, intensities corresponding to the rutile phase and, and intensities corresponding to anatase phase. So the, the phase mixing uh, in the nanocomposite by bone milling, in this case, the red line, was attributed to the chemical reactions within the atoms. Uh, triggered by increase of the energy uh, stored with the mixture caused by the increase of the temperature and local pressure in at, uh, at the collisions sites of the power involved uh, due to the process, due to the ball milling process. So while the other hand with titanium dioxide and graphene oxide by photosonication, we can observe uh, almost similar, uh, something similar uh, to the anatase phase commercial uh, in this case. So in this other slide, I show you the Raman spectroscopy characterizations for the nanocomposites, both nanocomposites and titanium dioxide uh, anatase phase conversion. So in, in this case, we can observe uh, something similar because in the red line, uh, that is both milling, uh, we can observe a mix uh, or the presence of both phases uh, of the titanium dioxide anatase and rutile phase while for, by photosonication is more similar to anatase phase uh, conversion. So in, in this case, uh, XRD Raman analysis help us to confirm the formation of anatase and rutile phases in titanium dioxide in our nanocomposite uh, by a ball milling process. So additionally, uh, two bands were observed uh, in this part in the, in the red line. I mean the NG band, confirming the presence of the graphene oxide in our nanocomposites. The presence of DNG bands of titanium dioxide uh, indicates an, a strong interaction between the individual materials, which means that they can work uh, simultaneously on, on one application in comparison with the other nanocomposite. So, and finally, it was observed, uh, this was the uh, methyl and brewery motion, uh, proofs for both uh, nanocomposites. It was observed that around uh, 210 minutes, commercial titanium dioxide alone removed at around 33% uh, of this uh, dye. Uh, after incorporation of graphene oxide uh, into the titanium dioxide matrix, uh, we proved an improvement of the removal efficiency. This because the a nanocomposite synthesized by photosonication after around 200 minutes show a removal of around 40%, this being a better in comparison with the titanium dioxide alone. So on the other hand, with the ball milling a synthesized nanocomposite, uh, the remotion we observed, it was a 65% after 200 uh, minutes of uh, 
of exposure in, in the machiever. And at final, as a conclusion, I, it's important to say that uh, with this work, we demonstrate the incorporation of graphene oxide into the titanium dioxide matrix improve uh, the removal efficiency of the bare material. It was other conclusion is uh, it was by the ball milling process method uh, that we achieved at around 65% removal of dye methyl in blue, being this percent better than uh, the achieved with the nanocomposite by photosonication. Uh, in this case, it was better uh, nano uh, ball milling process in comparison con with uh, photosonication. And finally, uh, ball milling allows it allows us to create titanium dioxide and graphene oxide materials with good methyl and blue removal capacity by the absorption mechanisms and without using additional energy source. Not mentioned that the absorption equilibrium was right, was reached uh, most faster, much faster in comparison with the with the others. And that's all. Some acknowledgement uh, of people who help us in this work. And that's all for the moment. Thank you for your attention. We have time to your question. Any questions here? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Francisco, for your presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what was the what was the ratio? Uh, of titanium oxide and graphene oxide used in this work. What is the proportion? Uh, sorry, Doctor, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand your question because I can listen a sound. But you, you asking me, uh, you, you mean the proportion of the yes. both materials? Ah, okay, okay. In, in both cases, uh, in both uh, in nanocomposite, it was two percent of graphene oxide and 19 percent of titanium dioxide in both in both cases photonication and ball milling process okay thank you 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 what is your opinion? Uh, in, in, this what case, is, yes. uh, in this case, it was just a remotion by absorption process because we didn't use any source of light. It was in darkness uh, totally. Uh, yeah, but the mechanisms it was absorption. Uh, the remotion it was just by absorption. Uh, in this case, it was in a uh, degradation. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions? No one? Okay. I have a question. What is your uh, process in the remotion of this composition of the metal blue? Is it in form of film or a powder? In this case, uh, we use, uh, in this case for this work, it was uh, just powders. Uh, yeah, just just powders. But in the future, the plan is to make a comparison between uh, powders and thickness with these same materials and maybe match and make a comparison between powders and, and coatings. And now how is the, the behavior in both? In both? Okay. Does it say, does it start uh, dissolved in the uh, metal blue solution? Uh, so, sorry, Professor, I didn't hear you. Uh, if the, if you are a catalytic uh, uh, titan dioxide is uh, dissolved in the uh, metal blue solution in the form of powder, Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, when we add uh, this powder in the solution with, titan with the colorant, uh, yeah, uh -huh. it uh, incorporates totally to the liquid. And uh -huh. yeah. Uh, uh -huh. With the time, you can uh, determine the, the composition 
Yes. Yeah, in this case, it wasn't a uh, descomposition. Uh, it, it just, uh, it was absorption. Uh, I mean, the molecules of the colorant just, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, just se pegaron to the surface in the material, but it wasn't the descomposition. For, for this, uh, it's necessary. Uh, other uh, tests we are going to do is photocatalytic studies. Uh, for prove the the degradation and and to see how this colorant uh, degrade uh, of the water, but the, the, we are going to do that. Okay, thank you. We have we have uh, finished this session. Thank you all. Thank <laughs> you.